So you're thinking about training your dog with an e-collar. Well, I have three things that you should consider. I'm Ethan Pippett with Standing Stone Kennels, pro staff for DT Systems. So the first thing that you should consider is, this is not a magic wand. E-collars are not magical. You're not going to buy one today, slap it on your dog, and magically fix whatever the behavioral issue is that you were struggling with, okay? It's a conditioning tool. You need to have already laid the groundwork with some form of teaching. We utilize positive reinforcement, and then you can use the e-collar to condition those already known behaviors. Conditioning processes take time, they take reps, and the e-collar is going to work that way. Thing number two, the e-collar is not used solely for correction, and I think that's a huge misconception that people get. We hear all the time, I'm gonna get an e-collar and I'm gonna shock my dog, okay? That, that's not the answer. It's, it's literally not the answer for almost anything. I'm not gonna say nothing because there are no absolutes, but it, it, pretty much nothing is that going to truly help you, okay? Um, like I mentioned before, it is a conditioning tool and it's going to need to be used that way. Now the third thing, this is something that's going to be on the opposite. The folks that are maybe hesitant a little bit or not comfortable with the idea of an e-collar, it's, think about it more as a form of communication, okay? The e-collar is a way for us to be able to reach out and communicate with our dogs at a further distance, much like any other training tool, a leash or uh, a long check cord, all of those things give us the ability to reach out and communicate. You're just extending this with the usage of an e-collar. All right, so now that we've talked about the three things that you should consider, it's not a magic wand. You're not going to utilize it solely for correction. Um, you need to think about the e-collar as a form of communication. I wanna give you a real world example that kind of explains for anybody that's maybe hesitant about the usage of the collar or the usage of stimulation on the collar. You need to think about the collar as using the lowest level that the dog's going to respond to. And that is going to change based on situations and environments and this is this is a really good way to think about it okay you're sitting in the car next to your friend on the way to the concert we can have a conversation just like this easily heard we can communicate at this low level low levels of distraction think about that then once we get to the concert everything changes it's loud there's lights there's distractions there's things going on and if we try and carry on the same conversation at this level it's no longer able to be heard. So sometimes we're gonna have to talk just a little bit louder, right? But that's still gonna meet the minimum amount of volume for that communication for the situation. Then once we come out of that situation, we're back in the car, that level is going to change again. So when you're working with your dog, it's important to understand that you've got an e-collar, it has multiple levels, and those different levels are gonna work for different environments. I hope this helps you in your decision-making process. I'm the guy with the pink gun. We will see you in the next video.